Rat men aren't real. They don't exist. They're a myth created to scare the citizens of the Empire, keeping them fearful and obedient. There isn't an endless tide of humanoid vermin living under cities that could overwhelm them overnight. And if there were, they certainly would be too busy stab-killing each other to determine who is top rat, not allying themselves with the forces of chaos to destroy the world. Help! The rat men are real and have allied with the forces of chaos and we're all going to die! Welcome to Warhammer Vermintide. Developed by Fat Shark, the Vermintide titles are hack and slash RPG gacha games where the currency for loot is measured in how hard your enemies fought and how many books you retrieved from the Tall's Horn Keep library. And real life currency is saved for the really important stuff silly hats. Vermintide 1 and 2 take place in the time leading up to the literal and canonical end of the world in Warhammer Fantasy. So just remember that nothing you do makes a difference. The world will be enveloped in death and chaos, unless this is all non canon. Either way, we're not quite at the end yet, and we're smack dab in the middle of the biggest furry convention anyone has ever seen, so we better get to work. You play as the Ubersreich 5, or 4 because it's only 4 player co op, an elite pest controlled unit that met at a bar comprising of your favorite historical fantasy stereotypes the dependable soldier, alcoholic dwarf, holier than thou elf literally holier-than-thou zealot, and his captive pyromaniac. The characters are a big part of what makes Vermintide so enjoyable, as now I don't have to sound like an ass by giving my teammates directions since Carillion will just do it for me. Careful your beauty doesn't make you sloppy, Sienna! This is the door! Watch out for shield rats, lumberfoots! So, where's this witch and manor meatflies? Stairs, mayflies, stairs. An elixir there, if you want to risk a mayfly alchemist's art. Jesus, Karelian, why Jeez. is she so fucking savage this level? Mayflies, 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 mayflies. The banter between the five frenemies is worth the price of admission alone. Did I ever explain how the chaos wastes came to be? Frogs. I yeah, heard it was frogs. Really big frogs. Frogs? Flocks? I have never heard anything so ridiculous! Although I was frustrated, I had to learn a whole new language just to understand the dwarf. But let's be real, you don't play Vermintide 2 just to listen to people making racist comments, you play Vermintide 2 to listen to people make racist comments while committing rat genocide. Left for Rats takes a lot of inspiration from the Left for Dead games, but also makes many changes that help the game stand on its own and enhance its gameplay. There are five difficulties, the hardest four locked until you're tough enough, and range friendly fire starts at champion. If you don't have three other friends, you can matchmake with randoms or play with bots. In either case, intelligence isn't guaranteed. There are three main game modes, campaigns, chaos wastes, and weaves. The game's main story is the Helmgart campaign, and everyone can play the two free LC campaigns. However, if someone who owns one of the paid DLC campaigns starts it, others in the session who don't own it can still play it. They just won't complete challenges to unlock DLC locked weapons, coins, or cosmetics. Those challenges don't just exist for DLC though. Dwarven Chuck Norris has a whole slew of challenges you can complete regarding character classes or levels for a variety of rewards, often a free loot box or five coins. All campaign levels have five books and various ravaged art to collect. Being an art and literature repo man adds challenge and bigger rewards. Three tomes are hidden in each map and are carried in your health item slot, while two grimoires that often require platforming or finding a needle in a haystack take up your enhanced potion slot. Each grimoire curses your team with 30% less health. Unlike tomes which can be freely swapped for health potions and picked back up, if a grimoire is discarded because you die or happen to misclick like an idiot, it's gone for good. Once you put a grimoire down, it's gone forever. It's not like yeah. you can trade it to someone else, it's literally gone. Did you know that it has a... How the fuck did I discard it? Uh, did you uh. interact with it while you were holding it? I didn't know that actually threw it away! Nothing. What idiot would do that? Loot dies can also be found randomly in chests or on the corpse of a monster or loot rat. Bringing home more books and dice upgrades the loot box you receive at the end of the level, enhancing your chances of getting better drops. Also at the campaign board are Heroic Deeds, Bullying Simulator, and the Weekly Event. All of these modes offer unique modifiers that can alter your experience greatly, but at least in the case of Heroic Deeds, you do get additional rewards. Nice. Chaos Waste is a free DLC roguelike mode featuring several small missions that make up one long expedition. Your power level means shit here, but your hero's talents do. After each mission, you vote with your team to determine where you'll go next. In each expedition, you'll progress through levels, upgrading your weapons and abilities by collecting and spending Pilgrim's Coins. The catch? Levels are often cursed by one of the four Chaos Gods, or their annoying stepchild, providing additional challenges like enemies turning into two smaller enemies when killed, or roaming death tornadoes. It's basically Vermintide 2 Box of Chocolates mode, and is incredibly fun. 
Weaves are uh, there too. Basically, they seem like a series of scripted challenges with combat modifiers and character builds separate from the main game, and your goal is to climb the weave ladder which gets harder and harder the higher you go. Total transparency, I uh, only did one and researched the rest. One last task. Just like in Left 4 Dead, levels are point A to point B adventures that have certain objectives and set pieces that do not change. But there's an AI director that calls the shots so repeat runs don't feel identical. They're in charge of where items appear, when to call a horde, and what cast those enemies come from. Some players think there's a science behind it, but I'm convinced it's all RNG. At the bottom of the totem pole, enemies like the lowly Skaven Slaves and Clan Rats exist only to die. They are merely meat shields for the more threatening elite enemies, like the unflinching crackheads and heavily armored tin cans. Then there's the specials that excel at damaging or outright immobilizing players, many of which you'll recognize from Left 4 Dead. We've got Pounces on You Uwu, Hookers, Lab Rats, Rats with Flamethrowers, the appropriately named Rattling Gunners, Goblin Rats, Fat Magician 1 and 2, and Stand Users. DLC not included. Yeah, if you own the Winds of Magic DLC, now you've got access to Weaves and a chance for the polarizing Beastmen to appear on some maps. Just a fair warning. Each special has a distinct sound cue or dwarven slur that you'll need to learn in case the English-speaking characters don't call them out. Because of their capabilities to completely shut down players, they should be eliminated ASAP unless you want the run to end early. <laughs> At the top of the food chain are bosses and the monsters. Oh, get fucked! The big bullet and sword sponges that deal massive damage and main warlord and for honor, but that doesn't mean they're immune to their own cheese. These guys can show up at scripted times in some levels, or at the most inopportune times. You might hear all this and think, wow, this sounds impossible! until you remember that there's four of you and only four million of them. I like those odds. Some careers are better at dealing with hordes while others excel at deleting elites or specials, so just split up who takes care of what and you'll be fine. Of course, this also means that teams that stick together win together, as going too far ahead or falling too far behind makes you an easy target to get picked off, especially if you fall behind when your allies have passed a point of no return and have no way to reach you. Help me! Combat is actually really simple. If there's an enemy in front of you, hit them. If they don't die, or 10 more rats take their place, keep swinging. Hit it! Then hit it again, and again. The donglies work best if you can find them. <laughs> you can also charge attacks, changing how you swing the weapon, as well as how hard it hits, how hard it staggers, and how many enemies it cleaves through. For example, with Barden's two-handed hammer, the first two normal attacks in a combo bop from the top and often only hit one target, while heavy attacks swing from side to side and cleave through entire hordes. If you're curious about your favorite weapons combos, visit your good friend the training dummy today. Some weapons also have special attacks, which uh, you'll have to go and find the special attack button because I rebound mine to the side of my mouse. If you're worried about contracting ungodly diseases from getting drenched in blood or drowning in vomit, consider one of the various ranged options so you can skewer, cook, or vaporize your enemies from afar. Ammunition is either limited and has to be found, or you have a meter where burning through it will burn you. The trade-off is that you can vent this overcharge by pressing R and paying with your own blood, or just not using the weapon and letting it cool down. There's also the throwing axe and javelin where you can only carry like two to three shots but can replenish them at any time, because magic I guess. If you hit someone and see this little red triangle, it means you've hit armor. You need to either use a different weapon, charge your attack, or hit somewhere softer, like the head. There are few feelings more satisfying than relieving a poor Skaven slave of the unnecessary burden he's carried all his life, his head. And yeah, you will be doing that a lot in Vermintide, as it's the weak point for like 99% of the enemies. Also essential to combat is, unfortunately, defense. Blocking actually works 360 degrees around you at the cost of stamina. The harder the hit and the further it is from directly in front of you, the more stamina it costs. If you're out of stamina, you'll still block the attack but be left wide open for additional hits. Another way to avoid damage is avoiding the hit altogether. Dodging is usually good in every situation, as long as you have room. If you need to create a safe space, press attack while blocking and you will begin moshing. Just like in a mosh pit, it's more effective against smaller targets. You can also hold attack while blocking and you'll follow up this shove with a smack. It's especially useful against enemies hiding behind shields. Why is defending yourself so important? Because, like in every video game ever, if your HP runs out, you get knocked down and need to be picked up again. The only way to feel better is by drinking green buckleys, bandaging your boo-boos, or relying on temporary health points. You can earn THP depending on what you choose as your class's first talent at level 5. 
It's basically just adrenaline. Keep killing and you can keep going. Stop and you'll lose that momentum. Once you get comfortable with the game, the horde becomes less scary because you realize it's full of walking health packs. Depending on the difficulty, you have a set number of times you can get wounded, as in knocked down and picked back up again. If you exceed that number, the Ratmen and Northerners, for some reason instead of eating you, tie you up while you wait to be rescued. If you drink the Mountain Dew, bandage yourself, or get bandaged by someone else, your wounds are reset to zero. Using the bandages on someone else also clears your wounds, even though you're not the one receiving healing. Also in FYI, fall damage does exist. And yes, you can launch yourself into the void. Unlike Left 4 Dead, the only items you'll find on your travels are consumables, like the aforementioned healing items, or bombs and potions that can destroy crowds and provide temporary buffs. Round bombs make big boom, while pyramid bombs are oddly shaped mixtapes. Purple potions recharge your ult faster, blue potions turn you into Sonic the Hedgehog, and yellow potions make you deal more damage. The reason you only find consumables in missions is because you gear up beforehand with your favorite weapons and jewelry. You can find new gear in loot boxes. Each hero has weapons only they can use, while jewelry is shared with everyone. Jewelry is, unfortunately, not for fashion, but for percentile benefits that enhance your damage or survivability. Finding gear is just as much about luck as it is skill. The quality of your items always comes down to RNGesus, but the higher the difficulty and more loot you return with, the more likely you are to get better items. There are five colors in the loot rainbow. They determine the quality of an item's properties and if it has any special traits. You can also break down any unused gear into crafting materials. Crafting materials are used to make new gear, upgrade the rarity of existing gear, or adjust its properties. The game keeps track of the highest level item you've ever received in each slot regardless of character, and new gear will always be within 5 points of that level, but maxes out at 300. Also unlike Left 4 Dead, each character has 4 different careers with abilities that affect how good they are at melee combat, surviving, cheering on their allies, or shooting them in the back. Most classes are still competent with either ranged or melee, and every 5 levels players can choose talents that give them some agency over how they want to play that career. Careers also fit into one of four categories when it comes to ultimate abilities. Zoomers, Boomers, Delete Buttons, or Fathers Going to Buy Milk. I'll do my best to cover each career as quickly and stupidly as I can. Starting with Marcus Kruber, we have the Mercenary, a solid frontline career that is rewarded for hat tricks and can yell when overwhelmed to push back enemies and save allies from the brink of death. Huntsman, honestly should just be called Magician, boosts his ally's chance of landing critical hits, somehow gets ammo back on ranged headshots, and can use his vanishing act to get out of a bad situation, or set up attacks on elites and specials. Foot Knight, a support tank hybrid that boosts ally defense, is himself harder to kill, and can get from point A to B knocking back everyone in his path. You have arrived at your destination. Grail Knight, Grail Knight buffs Kruber with an elite delete button and side quests. Grail Knight nerfs Kruber with forgetting how ranged weapons work and French ancestry. For the honor of the lady. <laughs> what was that, Kruber? Just trying on a Bretonian accent for size. Do you like it? <laughs> would you pack that in with you, Carillion? I can see you laughing. I swear I'm not. <laughs> Barnard's first class is the Ranger Veteran. Excellent story. Solid ranged buffs and a smoke bomb make picking off elites and specials a breeze, and the team is rewarded for killing specials with free ammo drops. Ranger Vet only gets stronger when you unlock beer drops. Ironbreaker, become unkillable, a literal tank, the most resilient career in the game that can eat a free hit every 20 seconds, and an ult that makes fun of nearby enemies letting you block anything and take half damage from whatever you don't. Slayer, become ungovernable and suicidal. The best defense is making sure you don't have to use it. Slayer doesn't have any ranged weapons because he is the ranged weapon. Okay, I lied, he can use throwing axes, but I'd rather use my two melee options for horde clearing and elite or boss carving. Side note, I never understood why Slayer mains would always leap into every patrol without hesitation, until I played Slayer. It's hard to explain why, but seeing everything turn into red paste is just satisfying. It's also lore accurate. Outcast Engineer turns Barden into a hypocrite. The only class that can juggle up to three bombs and has an ultimate that can be manually recharged, you can build the Engineer into a minigun all the time horde clearer and THP denier, or an armor piercing elite killer, but you don't use the minigun as often. What one sounds more fun to you? Waystalker. With Karelian starter class, you should only be pulling out your melee weapon when you need to defend or need temporary health. Otherwise, shoot special and elite enemies on sight, or just delete everything in front of you with your ult. 
If enemies are too hard to see, activate your eye binoculars while using any ranged weapon. Handmaiden. If MC Hammer was an elf, the fastest recharging alt and farther dodges let you safely get around and deal with any threat. Also, if possible, they should always be the ones reviving. Hold on, revive let me, me get the revive. I can revive oh. him faster, but oh, please yeah, leave him alone. But please, you son of a bitch. Shade. Nothing personnel kid, the class. Seriously, just disappear, then make elite and boss health bars disappear. Sister of the Thorn, aka the Disabler. Give the baddies a taste of their own medicine and become a special by erecting walls and using a class unique staff that can levitate any enemy smaller than a boss or monster. On to Saltspire with the Witch Hunter Captain. Shout at baddies and allies, pushing them back and boosting crit chance respectively. When a Witch Hunter Captain is present, point out high importance enemies and monsters so they take more damage. Bounty Hunter, see heretics, shoot heretics, delete tougher heretics. Repeat. Zealot. Local man, too religious to die, and actually gets stronger the lower his HP is. A common strat when playing Zealot is letting your HP drop down critically low and relying solely on THP. I'm not saying it's a smart strat oh, though. No. Warrior Priest. Local man, too religious to die, V2. Safer than Zealot but lacking ranged options, Warrior Priest can make himself or allies invulnerable for a few seconds, and gains a damage boost after enough enemies have been killed. You're also too holy to lose HP to grimoires and other curses. All of Sienna's classes play around her overcharge with stabs and reward bouncing back and forth between ranged and melee. For Battle Wizard, you gain faster staff cooldown after not casting anything for a few seconds. You can use your fire zoomies to get safely through a horde or to an ally. Pyromancer. The closer you are to burning up, the higher your chance to land critical hits. And your ult is a fiery delete button. Unchained. Live life on the edge. Half of your damage is taken as overcharge, and the higher your overcharge, the more melee damage you do. Go too high and become an unstable nuke. But don't worry, your ult is a more stable nuke that clears overcharge and doesn't insta-kill you. Fourth career. Literally unplayable. Now with all these classes and weapons, you're probably wondering, what is the meta? Fuck the meta. Pick whatever career and weapon you have the most fun with, because if you're watching a how-to video with the intention of actually learning as a new player, you aren't playing on the harder difficulties where that knowledge is relevant. The only meta thing worth considering is your first talent point. Unless you're a ranged baby who is too afraid to use a melee weapon, the heal share I talent should much. never be taken. Um, with limited healing supplies in the map, THP is the only thing keeping you alive. So you want to pick a talent that synergizes with your weapon or superpower. On that note, here's an assortment of random tips and tricks that may help you on your journey to ending all of Ratkind. And if I miss any, feel free to share your tips and tricks in the comments below. Check your settings and keybinds. There's options to show a more detailed UI with number values and even being able to see your ammo count when your melee weapon is out. If you're unsure about when you delivered a killing blow or shot your allies in the back, there's indicators for those too. Change your keybind for tagging and the social wheel to something you don't have to perform finger yoga to reach, like clicking your scroll wheel. Knowledge is power. Elite enemies and above can be tagged, highlighting them so everyone can see what stupid shit they're doing. You can use the social wheel to let allies know about threats or items, and even command bots to pick up items, including tomes and grimoires. Carillion, pick this up. Holy Wait. shit, she did! Yeah! <laughs> LG magic! <laughs> <laughs> but like, she was still here in front of me. I know! How, yeah, that's how, what how did she do magic. that? On the note of bots, you can actually select what characters and careers you want your bots to be. Sometimes, you'll encounter patrols. These are not mandatory and can be avoided altogether, so long as someone restrains the Slayer on your team. Unless there's an abundance of healing, it's often smarter to save healing items for after you've been knocked down to clear any wounds. Any buffs to healing also buff temporary health point gain, such as the Boon of Shalia. You can block while reviving. When the director drops a monster on your team and it's not part of a scripted sequence, the area will be surrounded in green flames until they die. I found this out the hard way when I was on the other side of those green flames. Guys, I can't get to you. I'm on the outside of the flame wall. What? I can't get to the fight. Where are I, you? I'm behind. I fell behind because I went to go get ammo. What? I can hit it with with my arrows and that's about it, I think. Fucking A. <laughs> DLC weapons can't be found in loot boxes and can only be crafted. You can press F when highlighting an item to favorite it and save it from being accidentally scrapped. Don't take the scoreboard too seriously. Nice kill count there, Fluke. 
Oh, I got this kid. It's not canon. <laughs> We're all in the hundreds, and you got thirty six. <laughs> It's out of context. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't register the, 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 what happened. <laughs> I'm actually crying. <laughs> and lastly, have fun out there. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you learned something or just had fun. I'd also like to thank my Patreon supporters helping make these videos possible, especially Shadow, the Rookie VA, and Call Me Josh. Have a good one, and see you forty thousand years in the future. Wait.